Na, o dabar metas mūsų pagrindiniams dviems pranešėjams. Čia norėčiau pakviesti, pakalbėti būtent apie kelią galbūt, apie kelią. Lietuva kaip jauna valstybė dažnai dar ieško savo kelio, jos verslas ieško savo kelio, turizmas ieško savo kelio ir medicinos turizmas turbūt kaip turizmo dalis dar labiau ieško to kelio, dar labiau ieško tų klientų ir turbūt kaip daugelis verslininkų jie nori nuo latinių klientų nuo latinių turistų, kad jie grįžtų ir grįžtų ir grįžtų dar kartą. Tas vadinamasis sustainable turism. Ir turbūt apie tai ir galės papasakoti viena iš pagrindinių šio renginio dalyvių, viena iš didžiausių, kaip ir sakė ponas Laimidus Paškevičius, pasaulio ekspertų, apie pasaulio medicinos turizmo asociacijos prezidentė, leidinių apie medicinos turizmą autorė, tarptautinių renginių pranešėje ir verslo konsultantė. Pasitikite, pone Rene Marie Stefano. Please welcome. Good morning. It's definitely my honor to be back in Lithuania. Um, as Lydamas was saying, I was here about four years ago before the Lithuanian Medical Tourism Association was created. And the presentation that I was giving was about cluster development and cluster development for medical tourism. Um, at the time, the Ministry of Economy was supportive of that event, and I think it's wonderful that we see the support of so many of the government authorities here today, and the Ministry of Economy, as well as Ministry of Health, the Chamber, Tourism Boards. Um, I will be talking a little bit about sustainable destination development, particularly as it relates to Lithuania. And one of the primary ways that I think most effective to explain what the future is for Lithuania is to talk about where some other destinations have been, both from the positive side as well as some of the mistakes that have been made along the way, and where Lithuania could have its own unique selling point. Where could it establish itself both in terms of excellent service and good quality of care? Special thanks to LitCare. We're very, um, really excited to be continuing to collaborate in these initiatives, and we definitely wish you all the success in developing, uh, developing the cluster and um, looking at new markets to penetrate as well as expanding the existing ones. So giving you a little bit of an overview, I'm sure those of you have seen different numbers in the industry. How big is the industry? About five years ago, they talked about it being a 60 billion US dollar industry. Um, most of the destinations have been reporting about anywhere between 10 to 55% growth in their medical tourism programs with a dedicated strategy and execution plan. So, Talking about about $100 billion makes sense. Um, the average medical tourist is spending five to 10 times the amount in the local economy. So you can imagine on top of the healthcare service revenue, it's impacting all sectors. That's including um, hospitality as well as the tourism sector. And of course, all of the um, economic uh, areas in the local population. The services that they're seeking, just about everything. So the problem with that is that we don't really know who is seeking what services. And I think the key point in developing um, the service lines of the cluster is not that it needs to be limited. Um, it needs to be focused. So even though um, you can have all of these different types of services that patients travel for, really focusing on the best of the best that you have to offer and the ability to serve those patients, the various target markets that you identify, meaning it should be culturally appropriate, there should not be language barriers. Your selection of, of service lines is going to be based on quality, how high is your quality, and how well and efficiently can you deliver those services. And on top of that, you're going to also be looking at what price structure makes sense for the various markets as well. So assuming you can see all these um, different services, it includes everything from things like stem cell treatments, alternative treatments, wellness, the integration of wellness and healthcare services, rehabilitation, geriatric care, elder care, um, 
And then orthopedics, cancer treatments, bariatric treatments, which is weight loss surgery. Um, and then I think another great area for the providers in Lithuania to focus on would be telehealth and second opinions. This is a way to very cost effectively get your brand into some target markets. Meaning many patients, it's, it's difficult to convince them to travel. And while you're establishing the brand for health services in Lithuania, you're able to actually provide digital second opinions. That builds the level of trust and the quality of care. And from those second opinions, many of those prospective patients um, will, will actually travel and come to Lithuania for care. So what I think is very important that we've seen for sustainability is looking at the entire healthcare ecosystem, meaning it's not just providing healthcare services. It starts out looking at the stakeholder associations like the cluster that's been developed, the support of dental associations, medical associations, the physician groups. It requires investment from all sectors. That means healthcare, hospitality, and tourism, looking at investing some commitment, some financial commitment to developing the services, packaging them, and then marketing and promoting those services into the different target markets. The patient, the consumer who is the user of healthcare services needs to know that you're out there. They want to know that you've packaged the services together and that you've made it easy for them to make their decision to travel for health and wellness. You have your hospitals, health centers, the physicians, the staff, the nursing. They all should be engaged in the process. It's very difficult to manage an international program just with your marketing team or just with an international patient coordinator. It's really important to be able to get your physicians engaged and the nursing staff engaged because what that means is when, they're, um, when you're looking to provide a quotation and you need to provide fast service, the physicians are on board. When the patients are actually um, in the facility, all of the nursing staff understands the special need of traveling patients. And then you have the supporting sectors. So even if you're providing good quality of care, you want to make sure that once they leave and they stay in a hotel or resort, that experience for them is the same same type of experience they received in the healthcare facility, that nothing will go wrong, or that the tourism activities that you've recommended to them are um, appropriate for their um, for the particular healthcare condition. It also includes research and education. So with greater pro providing more healthcare services, you're driving demand for better quality, advanced technology, Life sciences gets involved, biotechnology, biomedical, your pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies. All of this um, becomes part of the ecosystem. And then finally, because of this integration of all of the stakeholders, this impacts the political environment. That means some of the best um, programs that we've seen for destinations have included an integration of ministries of health, ministries of tourism, and ministries of economy. Why is that? Because of the economic impact that it creates. Why is it important that the Ministry of Health be also involved in this? The purpose of developing an international program is not only to generate revenue, it's also to improve the quality of care for local population as well. So there should be a good oversight to make sure that the level of care is always increasing and improving. So I have a lot of slides that are screenshots. Um, I'm happy to provide this presentation to anybody who's interested if you give me your card. Um, but some of the shots that I provide are, are examples of, of destinations that have health and wellness programs and some of the positive attributes of their development of the cluster. Um, Lithuania's medical tourism competitive advantage is described in the booklet that you have that outlines the cluster's healthcare services. European quality and professional doctors, competitive pricing for advanced technology and good quality of care, all-inclusive package, meaning the bundling of services, the health, the wellness, the hospitality um, and resorts, as well as travel and leisure packages, and of course, fast and precise service. Looking at wellness and how this provides a, a great opportunity, because we're talking a lot about medical tourism, and I think some of the conversation should turn to wellness and integrating wellness with healthcare services. 
These different areas, the global wellness economy, is estimated at 3.4 trillion in 2013. It includes fitness, mind, body, soul, anti-aging, healthy eating, um, workplace wellness is another growing trend where corporations are recognizing that they need to get involved and be supportive of healthier lifestyles and living. And many employers are contracting with healthcare providers and different groups to incorporate wellness with some of the medical services. Um, preventative, personalized medicine, and then, of course, complementary and alternative medicine. So recognizing what types of health services could be integrated with these packages or which target markets are very interested in traveling for wellness allows for diversified strategy. For instance, wellness tourism is a, um, was shown to be increasing at 12%, which is very high considering regular tourism trends have been between 4 and 9%. International companies are looking at taking wellness to heart. They're challenged with a lot of different areas like human capital shortages, health conditions, non-communicable diseases, chronic conditions, um, poor, poor opportunities to learn more about improving lifestyle. So they are looking for outsourced solutions, not only for their high-level exe executives, but also for larger teams that they find they become more productive when they understand the education behind fitness, um, wellness in the workplace, and different things that they can do to incorporate in their everyday activities to support he he um, healthy living for them and their families. Some of the wellness initiatives that are actually in Europe, you'll see that they're supported um, either through the tourism board or separate organizations that have been created. So Croatia has a program for wellness. Germany has a web page, Discover Our World of Wellness. The Czech Republic, through the National Tourism Board, has a strategy for wellness and their services, including medical spas and medical tourism. Hungary also has a very high spa focus, and as you know, is well known for um, dental services. But the point that I'm trying to make here is dedicated visibility um, and national strategies that are supported with their national authorities. Sweden also has a spa focus on wellness because European culture does understand wellness more than the rest of the world. That's changing. If you look at some of the areas that I identified in terms of wellness industry, you'll see that many of those involve, um, are, are prominent in Asia. Uh, there are strong strategies in the uh, Middle East area to try to reduce cost and focus on um, uh, reduction of um, non-communicable diseases. Uh, they suffer from obesity and um, uh, cardiovascular illness. So Lithuania's opportunity to pr promote spa and wellness is very strong, particularly with its waters and its muds, um, and looking at also the integration of medical spas and the treatment plans. Some of the th other things going on in Europe is a focus on education. So I'm going to talk about the next um, few slides. I'm going to be talking about the importance of education and capacity building. So in Spain, for, for instance, many of the universities are looking at medical tourism education at the undergraduate level as well as the graduate level, looking to put this into the medical schools and the hospitality and tourism management schools. Um, in Hungary, we have launched a chapter there. They're looking at developing a healthcare cluster, but also the idea that cluster allows them to get support from the authorities. Um, Portugal, as well, is developing some educational curriculum program, and the chapters that we have developed um, are partnered with uh, clusters or medical tourism associations to serve as a platform for creating greater education, awareness, and engagement. So the successful strategy that we've seen, and this is really any of the destinations, has included some of these key, key four points. Um, it's, all of them have been complete with some sort of government support, meaning over time the support of the government gave credibility and accountability to all of the initiatives. The groupings or clusters um, or associations that have developed, um, they, they actually move forward to develop relationships with buyers of healthcare. 
So by the buyers, they may be insurance companies, they may be governments, they may be employers, or facilitation companies to create more streamlined flow from a business to business perspective um, as, as opposed to just business to consumer. The collaboration amongst the stakeholders is key. You've already developed this with the, with the establishment of the cluster and clearly by the look of engagement of everybody in the room and the number of people that are here after only four years of developing medical tourism in Lithuania, I think it, it demonstrates that there is a commitment to collaboration. Um, and then there's a strong focus on education and international accreditation. About just about every um, cluster and organization has looked at what they need to communicate quality. So whether it's international accreditation of their facilities or enhancement of their, na their national accreditation system, um, quality is an important point. And quality is Im important because if you cannot communicate quality, you have a difficult time uh, demonstrating your unique selling point. So for instance, Poland, for example, just completed a three-year strategy on um, marketing. They had organized familiarization tours. They did a lot of marketing in different markets, bringing people in to see the facilities. And just today, uh, just today there was an article about this big question about Poland and the quality of healthcare. That only 200 of their facilities, are, of the 800, are accredited through their national accreditation scheme. And in fact, that their national accreditation scheme is deemed to be one of the lower um, stringent accreditation schemes in all of the EU. So the millions of euros that were spent on marketing an article like that leaves you to wonder, well, what are you going to do now about the quality? How are you going to improve it? And how are you going to communicate it to all of those people that you've been marketing to for the last three years? And then finally, cluster influence on public policies. It's really important that there's a collaboration amongst the different authorities. Um, this, do, this is not just a private healthcare initiative. It also includes oversight to make sure that the quality of care is improving regularly as it should, that there's no local population negative impact, and that there's something that can be done to support the stakeholders that are driving tourism and driving business into the nation. So I'm giving you an example here of a cluster in Medellin, which is in Colombia. And the reason that I did that is, um, I know it's far away, but Medellin is very interested in attracting the European market. And as you know, brand image is important. So Colombia has struggled with its brand image, obviously for a lot of reasons, safety and security. So when Medellin, which is a city um, in, in Colombia, decided to put together a healthcare cluster, they felt that their branding needed to include, one, people feeling and experiencing their city, and two, they wanted to be able to instill confidence in the quality of services. So their tagline was, feel the confidence. Now every country that they go to do business with, they may be offering a different type of service. What they want to offer in Spain is maybe different than what they would be offering to self-funded employers in the United States or to an island in the Caribbean. For instance, in Spain, they want to be offering uh, pediatric services, neurology, and very high-level um, cardiovascular care. Um, to the self-funded employers, orthopedics is their primary goal. In the Caribbean, they um, are offering uh, diagnostics and second opinions and a lot of other surgical interventions. So the point that I'm trying to make is your, what people feel about you and what people hear about you, part of it is in that initial brand, identifying what is the quality, what are you trying to achieve. And that doesn't mean that you have to narrow the service lines just to a few types of medical procedures. You can offer a complete grouping of medical procedures, but to each target market you may be communicating in it a different way. So um, the objective, objectives of their cluster is very similar to what's been developing in Lithuania, looking at competitiveness, productivity, um, promotion of the stakeholders, various marketing activities, looking at greater access into the international markets, um, and looking for greater recognition of the city of Medellin and distinguishing that from its national brand as well. 
Some of the requisites that they went through are similar to the ones that you're going through now. For instance, international accreditation or a commitment to achieve international accreditation in a two-year period of time in order to be a member of the cluster. Um, their goal is to make sure that all of the members of their cluster have English websites, that they have marketing materials in, in English, and that they all have properly been trained and certified for international patient uh, services. And why is that? They recognize that delivery of a consistent customer experience is the most important thing, consistency. What happens at this clinic and this hospital is going to be exactly, exactly the same. That includes your risk management strategy, it includes your protocols and your policies for handling uh, something if it does go wrong, and it includes the types of uh, services and packages that you provide to them. Spain Cares is another example. Um, their focus is quality of health care, system and service. They have great experience in tourism, a rich cultural offer, and pleasant weather. Well, this is very similar to what you can find in so many other destinations. So their goal, or their challenge, I should say, will be to how do you now take this and say something about your healthcare services and the quality. It's, and, and that may be done through training and, and certification. Um, their current revenues that they have is 140 million euros. They're looking at through the cluster development, which is an integration of these um, five organizations at the moment, will be that it will go to 500 um, million euros in the next two years. So taking some of those um, areas and just using as an example, because I know Dr. Prenz is going to talk about target markets, um, just looking at some of these existing markets I know that you've been discussing, Ukraine and Belarus, for instance, you know the common challenges, looking at um, uh, those gaps in their delivery of healthcare service, that's how you're going to communicate to them what your value is. So if they have health, health outcomes that remain uh, poor, they have lack of evidence-based healthcare, then what do you give them? You give them evidence-based healthcare, you give them outcomes, you give them the results. And that might be difficult at this moment, but if you focus just on a, key, a few key service lines that you know you do really well and that you can provide metrics for and provide outcomes related information, that will be your unique, unique selling point tied together with good service experience. So I see, um, in addition to looking at these same markets, using social media to educate and engage. Uh, social media is one of the main ways that we interact with people nowadays. It's a good, it's, it's a positive thing, and it also could be a negative thing. If something goes wrong and you don't deal with it, it can, ru it can ruin your brand. So being um, very active in social media, I think, is very important. Looking at some key areas of medical expertise and identifying patient associations that focus on those medical expertise in the target market. So for instance, um, a, a local cancer association, a local cardiovascular organization, um, a, a local obesity or weight loss association that you could work with and partner with to create greater business ties. Um, and then looking at developing relationships with physicians. Um, if you have a program for education uh, exchange, it makes sense to create some tie-ups with referring physicians, bring them to you, or go there and provide training to them in the areas of medical expertise that you want to attract patients. It's a way to deliver your brand in that market and create good relationships from physicians that will refer them. Some of the Nordic com uh, countries, I think that th this is information that you've looked at already, um, particularly as part of your strategic plan, but because of what they spend and also the amount of time that they travel, I think that creates a good market. Um, they, um, they look for sustainability, they look for wellness, they look for authenticity, and if that is becoming that you are unique, is, if that's becoming your value, good service delivery, integrative health care, good patient-centered care, good customer experience, then this would be a very good market to focus on. It's also not a primary target market for many of the other European countries at this time. 
So I just want to go through just a couple of the programs that we have because it's, there are programs um, for certification and training. But when I discuss international patient services and the integration and, and building up capacity, I think you really need to take a look at the types of standards that I'm referring to and what that means in terms of delivering a good customer uh, uh, service. So for instance, we think that the customer experience starts when they arrive in our facility. And that's actually not true. It starts when they pick up the phone, they land on your website or some other interaction that gives them an impression of who you are and what you're trying to communicate to them. It requires responsiveness. It requires uh, a good continuum of care. And it doesn't end when they leave your facility. It doesn't end when they leave Lithuania. It ends well after they return home when they've achieved the medical outcome that they expected when they made the decision to travel. So to give you a, an idea, a knee replacement, a good medical outcome isn't that they just survived the procedure. It's that a year down the road they have full mobility of that knee and that was what was expected as per their treatment plan. So it's looking at a longer term um, relationship. And through that longer term relationship, you're actually going to be able to generate greater brand awareness, greater goodwill, and actually that patient will talk more about the experience that they had because you're communicating with them over time. So looking at what happens in a cycle of, of training and certification, I think probably um, the best area would be to show you what this looks like for our organization at least. Um, so for healthcare providers, we do a three-day training program. Uh, there's management level, staff level, and we develop project champions. And why is that important? If you put a champion responsible for the program within your facility, they can keep everyone engaged, they can monitor the level of engagement, and further, they can train any new staff or new employees that come in and keep them engaged in those, in those standards. The same thing for um, the hospitality side, and then, of course, professionals in the supporting sectors. And I can go through th this very, very quickly, but the, the, the point is that there's diagnostic evaluation of the facility, there's review of paperwork policies and protocols, there's a site visit survey, and then, of course, there's a survey. We just finished a um, certification program in, in, in um, Puerto Rico. Uh, we did finish the training program in Puerto Rico. Uh, it just gives you an idea of a small, smaller destination that looked at the importance of training and certification as capacity building and why they felt that would be marketable. Their goal was $300 million, 3,000 jobs, and um, 30,000 international patients over a three-year period of time. So we trained and certified 47 healthcare providers, 100 professionals, and 20 um, hotels. And they're really engaged in the program. And those, those facilities that went through the program recognized the standards, have in, um, integrated the standards into their normal protocols and into their own competencies. And even those that had a passing score when we went back and did the survey, they actually had made the improvements to get to 95, 100 percent because they felt that it was important not to be operating at 75%. They felt that they could do better and it was important for them to do better. This is just an example of the competencies. Um, these are the hospitality competencies. So you well re recognize in, in the hospitality it's more focused on uh, wellness related, but also for those facilities that actually will be providing care um, or, or um, rooms and recuperation for uh, surgical patients, um, they, they also have the standards for that as well. And then our uh, CMTP program is the professional program, which is for travel agents, um, people in the insurance industry, people who want a greater understanding of the industry to be able to support the program. So I'm running out of time, but I just want to um, mention a few things about social media. And the reason for that is that our outreach, we have over 1.5 million for our outreach, and we use social media a lot for business to business as well as uh, business to consumer relationships. Um, but when you're using social media, 
you're not just using it. You really need to create a campaign. So for Lisbon, for instance, this, uh, Lisbon, the Tourism Board of Lisbon put together a social media campaign, even though there technically isn't a full cluster involved. But what they did, they included many different areas, different engagements. They used LinkedIn, they used Facebook, they used Twitter um, for B2, uh, business to business as well as business to consumer uh, development. They looked at how they could become engaged. They sought support in developing content that made sense for the consumers. Uh, they tracked it over time. They put their banners in different locations. They, for this campaign, they utilized uh, some of our web, web resources. And then they evaluated. They took a report at the end. They said, how successful was it in attracting views and attracting impressions? And so my point is this. Social media is going to be an important part of your strategy, whatever it is. If you're marketing orthopedic services or cancer services or wellness, just make sure that you're tracking it and looking at how um, you can improve over time because it's always changing. And as you know, with uh, search engine optimization, things can become outdated very quickly. Consumers want to know that you are active, and so your web pages should not be built six months ago with no fresh information on it. They should always be actively talking about the different things that you're doing in the community, medical advances that you're doing, new service lines that you're adding, um, including your Twitter feed onto your pages. And of course, looking at your analytics. One of the ways that you have um, a challenge right now is how do you actually drive patients to the site and then how do you measure it? So I'm going to very quickly go through these slides because I am out of time. Um, but there are there is global patient management system out there that you could take a look at that allows all of your marketing activities to go to your website. But on the back end of the website is the ability to generate more leads convert those leads better, and keep the patient fully engaged while creating a privacy-compliant storage for their medical records and containing all of the communication into one system. It also allows for multidisciplinary approach to care, meaning if you're, having the, if you're working with a referral physician, the referring physician can access the patient record as well as the treating physician. It allows for greater continuum of care. And then, Looking at how this happens now, there's so many different touch points. You might be dealing with a travel agent. You might be dealing with a facilitator. You may be dealing with an insurance company. Um, you may be dealing with an employer. All of these parts, it becomes a challenge. It becomes a messy, messy wire of connections, all done with email, Excel spreadsheets, and often very antiquated uh, means of communication. And then when you need to actually go and generate a report, you really don't have the ability to do it. You're pulling information from different places because most healthcare facilities are actually tracking the patient only once they arrive at the, at the, at the hospital or clinic, mm -hmm. meaning that patient record doesn't actually get into their system until they arrive. So all of that communication and everything that you've done in advance is not really stored anywhere. Um, so looking at what, what it would look like a web page with um, the global patient management would look like your normal web page, right? But then when you actually go and you put um, the information in, you've got all of the information about your medical procedures, the doctors, the services that, that you have to offer, the packages that you're, you're offering, and it allows a quick way for the patient to get information about the medical procedures themselves, and you're only inputting that information once, meaning you change it if it needs to be updated, but you're only doing it once. So whether it's a patient from Sweden or a patient from Belarus, they can, you can give them the information very, very quickly. Um, and then finally, I think one of the most important things that's missing in the industry is the ability to generate reporting. So looking at how many inquiries did you get for orthopedic ser services? How many of those inquiries actually converted to a patient? Where did those patients come from? How old were they? How did they actually access you? How many of them actually came for the service? What was the, the value of the service that you made? And what is the economic impact of the whole program, including your packages? 
This type of reporting allows you to see what's going on with a patient at any period of time. Are they in treatment? Where are they being referred? Is, are they being processed? So you have snapshots. What does this mean? What does this all mean and why am I sharing it? This allows you to, one, reduce the human resources and time that it takes to manage a patient case, but also it allows you to show, demonstrate the economic impact of the program and improve service delivery. You become more efficient more responsive and more effective. And that means reduced costs for you. So opportunities converted by country, all of this is very good information for the cluster. So in, in summary, I think the key point here is customer experience is one of the biggest gaps in the medical tourism industry. We focused for the last 10 years on providing information about international accreditation and spooning, um, spoon feeding patients information that came from our brochures. Now they want to know what, it, what is the experience that I can get because there's over 90 countries that have medical tourism programs or talking about medical tourism programs. Um, just as a mention, we have an annual conference at the end of uh, this month. It's in Orlando, if anybody's interested in uh, going to Florida. I know it's starting to get cold here. It is the largest medical tourism event in the world and a good opportunity to meet buyers. So I thank you for your time. I do wish you great success with your program, and thanks for letting me share. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll have an opportunity to answer, to discuss the topics that have been discussed here together uh, and also to answer some questions. Our experts will answer some questions from the hall as well uh, in a short while. Netrukus mes turizm proga padiskutuot apie tai, ką girdėjome šiame pranešime ir kitame pranešime. Taip pat lauksime klausimų iš salės.